Back here on MLB tonight at Port St. Lucie, Florida. Mets are getting ready to go a year after the crash and burn. The big question is, are you rebuilding or refreshing? David Stearns, the new man in charge, had some answers today. Before the season. I, I think that's probably the most likely outcome. We're, we're not going to get into the specifics of, of any particular negotiation. Um, I'm not going to provide you guys updates uh, on, our, on any conversations that uh, exist back and forth. But um, look, when you have a really talented player who's really good, who's entering his final year of club control, who happens to be represented by Scott Boris, um, these things generally end up uh, into free agency. And we understand that. This is an organization that's dealt with that before with really good players um, and has ended up in a perfectly fine spot. So, uh, yeah, I have not seen Pete here yet, haven't talked to him here yet. Um, but what we're going to talk about is, look, let's go out and have a great year together. Um, you go out and have a great year. Um, let's have a great year as a team. And uh, if we do that, we're both going to be set up, the organization and Pete, going to be set up very well um, going into the offseason. Last week when you got asked about Pete Alonso. All right, so there is uh, David Stearns. I guess he was being asked about Pete Alonso, clearly. Mm -hmm. And uh, and we ran that instead. So, all right, a lot, that's just one of the issues that's out there for Stearns. Uh, take a look at some of the issues facing the New York Mets. This is a year after they had the number one payroll in the game, the number one payroll of all time. And now, guess where they are? Still number one in payroll. <laughs> There's a lot of dead Mets money rolling out there. Guys who are no longer with the Mets getting paid by the Mets. Also, Buck Showalter is gone. Carlos Mendoza comes over, bench coach for the Yankees. Now manager, first time in the major leagues with the New York Mets. That's the major thing. Pete Alonso, age 29 season, going into his contract year. And kind of the conundrum, and Anthony, I want to just start with you before we get into the specifics of Alonso, is can you refresh? Look, they're not rebuilding, but if they refresh, do you lose these prime years, like the end of the prime of Lindor, Nimmo, and McNeil, and also like Starling Marte? Like, mm -hmm. it, it's a delicate balance that yep. they're trying to walk through here. It is, and I think that's the biggest challenge, and I think that's why they brought in the front office personnel that they did. I think they're trying to maximize what they see as potential talent, whether it's in the minor leagues or on the free agent market, without having to try to go buy it, to try to create a window where these guys can still compete and potentially get to the playoffs and do some damage. Um, I think it's, a, it's an interesting line because of where they went last year with that payroll. They certainly needed to – kind of pull back the reins because they saw how it worked out. It did not work out well at all. And so they're trying to go about it a different way. I think they are going to plan C in a sense because I think A and B was to try to make a really good use of a three-year window. That isn't happening now. Um, and so they're going to try to still compete in this, you know, in this 24 season, but they're going to do it in a different way than I think anyone expected. Mm. I like what they got back at the end of the year last year, and with all that talent that they've, you know, kind of re-energized the organization with, it's going to be interesting to see if and when they allow that to play out in the major league level, if it shows up. And I think that's what they're hoping to see this year. Can I throw this in before you start? Because I know you're not big on Pakoda projections. He, he did, <laughs> yep. It doesn't seem to like not those. Not so much. But, but it just gives you a basic idea of where they are. The Pakoda projections for the Mets this year, 84 wins. So clearly, if you Even just, with the Phillies. I just, I had, that surprised me. It is, right. Yep. Right. So if you're looking at the, kind of the engine of the Mets, as, you know, I think David Stearns was saying right. that today as well, there's still a lot there. The question is, do you try to top it off or do you pull back and try to get younger? And what we've seen, David Stearns and what he's done with the Brewers, right? We, this is a situation where he's not going to top it off. He's brought in to be able to maximize what he has right now, help build that farm system, as well as be able to be smart in the middle of the season come trade deadline time. I think you look at also last year as an example of a Mets team that can still get this year can still get to the postseason because you look at what the Marlins did last year, getting to the wild card with a very mediocre team. You look at what the uh, what the Diamondbacks were able to do, getting to the uh, getting to the postseason with a team that wasn't necessarily upper echelon when we looked at the beginning of the season. Mm -hmm. I think the Mets still have that opportunity, but the biggest thing to me is when you watch the Mets games, they have to get out of the first inning. Like they hurt themselves because either the starting pitching was not there early on, or they weren't able to score runs early on they were always in a hole so I'll be interested to see if that changes up this year that's that's the thing for me and this is why I think I don't quite buy into as much of their potential as I might with other teams who are going through a similar process when I see this team 
I look at the starting pitching, and you mentioned the Diamondbacks. They had a nice one-two punch coming into last year, and we knew that. And then they had some young talent that was on its way, and we knew that too. Um, they don't have that – Identity. Yeah, yeah with, with their mean. starting right. pitching. And so to me, that lowers their ceiling drastically for me. Even what I think of as their, you know, what I would consider like an average season for them, it wouldn't, I don't know if it would be 84. Because what we've seen even out of this lineup, they have some guys who have shown an ability to flash superstar levels of, of power in Alonzo, yeah. ability in Lindor, um, bat to ball skills in McNeil. They've been very inconsistent though, whether it's season to season or in season. And to me, that, that just scares me. I don't see a team that has the consistent, consistency yet. And I think that's why they're so excited to let some of these young guys play, let them develop, and hopefully develop some more consistency from them. And that's going to be their next group of core guys that they're going to win with. Doesn't this look like two teams right here? Like if, 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 uh, if uh, Ronnie Marci Mauricio didn't get hurt, you'd almost have two separate teams. Here's our old team. Yeah. Here's our new, yeah, <laughs> new right. team. Yeah. Separate. Kind of like the Padres, like a little top-heavy. What do you do with Pete Alonso? Man, he's a guy to me that's tough not to sign. Obviously, we understand Boris, the agent, and he most likely gets a free agency because of what we've seen history-wise. But I look at it's tough to pass up a guy that OPS plus the production is always up there near 130, 140, somebody who's always driving in runs. Those types of players don't come along that often. He's shown us in the first five years of playing Major League Baseball that he is one of the most consistent power hitters in the game. Yes, I understand the average took a drop last year, but still produced at a very high level. I, it's hard for me not to move on and, and say I don't need Pete Alonso in the middle of my order if I'm the Mets. You know what's difficult? Because this, uh, Anthony, I think this is very difficult. Um, analytically, there's some real holes in Pete Alonso's game, right? He's just very one-dimensional, um, but his production is massive, right? To your point, the home runs and RBIs and total bases, you don't ignore that. And also, Steve Cohen has made it clear, we're behaving like a number one market, yes. right? The yeah. owner has said, we're, and if you're behaving like a number one market and you're a behemoth, which they are, you usually don't let your own homegrown guys that play well walk. You better keep your talent. And I think we saw it in Boston when the Mookie Betts whole scenario played out and he left for LA that wasn't good well they learned their lesson and they figured it out and they signed Rafi Devers to an extension uh, it's going to be interesting to see what happens here with the Mets because to me Pete Alonso some of the numbers that I've heard that he's looking for I'm not sure I agree with that because of your exact point BK it, he's a little bit more of a one-dimensional player than some of the other guys who can affect the game in many ways he's going to do it pretty much from one one place. It's going to be in that four spot. It's going to be hitting home runs, mm -hmm. and that's it. And that's fine. But to me, that may not get you the type of money that you're seeking. Now, being the face of this franchise, being the voice of this franchise at times, and being that guy in the clubhouse that he's got a never-say-die attitude, and yeah. I appreciate that right. very much. That is something that these fans love. So from that perspective, I, ho I do hope it gets done. He's done nothing but deliver. Again, from Absolutely. a wider lens, right. you can look and yep. say, this guy, this could come up through the system, and he's delivered big at 300 total base, 140 RBIs. That gets it done. But, right, he also hits 217. He's not a great fielder. He's not Goldschmidt or Freeman running the bases. He's held up the offense. You look at even th this whole team has struggled at times, and still Alonzo's been the one guy that's been capable yep. of doing yep. damage.